This is the Godox SL150 bicolor, and I'm literally not gonna be able to see for the rest of the day. All right, let's, let's fix this. First peppermint mocha coffee of the season. Brian Miller here, and welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. Except this is not an audio-focused video, of course. It's a lighting-focused video. Now, we all want our videos to look crisp and clear and beautiful, but the real problem is that we get so wrapped up in how sexy it is to buy new lenses and new camera bodies every year, but we don't pay nearly enough attention to the light. And the truth is, lighting is so much more important than the video camera itself. So let's take a look at this, the Godox SL150 by color. It is a monstrous light, but the question is, is it overkill for the average content creator? That's what we're gonna answer today. The Godox SL150 by color is a heavy and robust continuous video light. It features a power toggle, adjustable groups and channels for linking and organizing multiple lights, a very quiet automatic fan that can be manually turned off, adjustable output from 100% all the way down to 1% for incredibly fine tuning, adjustable color temperature from 6500 to 2800 Kelvin, and some FX settings for filmmakers. It also features a Bowens mount for standard attachments, including soft boxes. The angle adjustment knob is strong and accurate, staying put precisely where you want it. Although the screw that attaches the light to a C-stand feels less trustworthy. It's definitely the weak point of the build construction, which isn't ideal. Hey, it's me, 10 hours in the future. In case it wasn't obvious, Godex sent me all of this stuff. They sent me both of the lights, both of the soft boxes, everything except the newer C-Stand that I'm using. So this is obviously a sponsored video. All opinions are my own. Godex doesn't get to see any of these videos or hear my opinion before the video goes live. And that's it, it's pretty straightforward. Now, the quality of this light is largely dependent on which softbox you're using. At the moment, I'm using the Parabolic softbox from Godox. This is the quick release, it's fantastic. You saw how, how quickly and easily I was able to just set this up and just as easily you can uh, fold it back down for storage. But let's switch to a different kind of softbox completely, a lantern softbox. <laughs> All I've done is swap out the soft box for the lantern. Now, this is really important. I haven't changed a single other thing, and you'll notice that this is significantly darker than it was a moment ago, and that's uh, for a couple of different reasons. One, because this soft box is quite a bit smaller than the giant, ridiculous, parabolic soft box. I mean, people don't realize when they see these in YouTube videos how giant these are. More to the point is because it's smaller, it's keeping the light further away from me, and the further the light is away from you, the duller or darker it's going to be. So I'm going to need to crank up the output of the light to compensate. So now the light is at 75% output, and I gotta tell you something, that is incredibly impressive. I'm at f2.8 for this entire video. Not, you know, not f1.8, not 1.2. I'm at 2.8 with my ISO on base ISO, which is 200. This being four feet away from me, that is incredibly impressive. Now, what you'll notice is if you look at the side by side right now from when I had the parabolic is that the lantern softbox, of course, is lighting up quite a bit more of the background. The parabolic softbox is a very directional light. That's what it's designed for. So it gives you more of a, a moody look. Whereas using the lantern softbox is going to take this light and spread it over a wider area. So more of the background is lit up. It's it's coming across my face a little bit more here. So there's less of a less of a harsh shadow uh, right down the middle of uh, uh, the other side of my face. It, this is really just, it just depends on what you like in a light, but that's, that's the point I'm trying to make here is that the light itself is not enough to get it done, right? The light is incredibly powerful. It's very versatile. We'll take a look in a second about how you can switch it from daylight, which it is now 5,600 Kelvin to, to any other color temperature. But the big thing is the soft box you pair it with matters a ton to how the light ends up 
looking in your videos. I quite like the look of this, the Lantern Softbox, because even though it's a little bit less moody or dramatic, I like that it gives me a little bit of the background. So let me click on some of my accent lights. The point is you're looking at the Lantern Softbox being used with a standard kind of YouTube-y, cr YouTuber-y, creator, content creator-y kind of a setup with some accent lights and things like that. So let me now switch back to the Parabolic Softbox so you can see the difference in how the background looks with all these other lights when we focus the light on me and not on everything. Notice with the side-by-side -side here uh, how big a difference the different kind of softbox makes. Again, right, same light, adjust the power output, but other than that, there's a huge difference with this parabolic because it's so much more focused, it's more spotlighty, uh, and it does, it does have a nice, you know, it, it wraps around the face, uh, but you really don't get nearly as much of the, the lighting up of the background, and so what we've got here is a slightly more dramatic looking shot as opposed to the nice even wash that you get with the, with the lantern. I actually use the lantern softbox paired with this exact light in my studio every single day because this is not the light that I actually use to film all these talking head videos you see on my main Brian Miller channel. The light I use is actually the much, much cheaper, more affordable SL60W. That is a lot more common. Many, many content creators own that. What I actually use this for is it stays permanently mounted way up in the corner uh, all the way at the ceiling on a wall mount in my studio with the lantern box on it. I literally use it for my permanent everyday, all day, just light up the studio. I, I use it instead of flicking the lights on and it just creates a very bright, but very soft, even wash across the entire studio. But now there's a few more things we need to consider before giving a rating or a review to this particular light. One is the by color setting, two is the fan noise, and three is the build quality. So let's, let's go over those. Now we're set to 3200 Kelvin, which is something of a normal indoor tungsten color. Sometimes you see 2700, sometimes you see you see 32. I set this to 32 because it's the closest I can get, I think, to, to this particular accent light. Why would you ever use this? Well, a couple of reasons. One, you would use it if you are filling in the room with normal indoor lighting. If you're just in your living room or a room in your house where part of the lighting you're using is that tungsten color, well, then you can set the light to the same color as the lights that are already in your house and then re and then white balance your camera for that and it looks like this. So this has the camera set to 3200 Kelvin. You could also hold up a gray card and do a custom color temperature and you can see that what happens is now my face is approximately the right color. It's not quite, Panasonic doesn't do a great job. As soon as you do that, it makes everything else feel a lot cooler because we've balanced to a warmer color temperature. So that's one option. But the other reason that you might want to change the color of your light drastically to tungsten or something like that is for effect if you're an indie filmmaker and you're trying to create the mood in a scene. All right, so imagine that I'm an indie filmmaker. I'm making a movie on a budget and I've got this light and I've got this soft box and what I did is, let's say I'm filming a scene where my character is, you know, is sitting, I'm not a filmmaker, but let's just say that I'm filming a scene where my character is sitting in this room and you're supposed to be sitting in the dark with nothing but this light on. The problem is if you're filming from this direction, if I didn't have any additional light, it would look like this, watch. So I'm in complete shadow, complete darkness right now. But if I wanted to film from this direction, I could turn this light on, set to the same color temperature as this light here, and all I've got this on is 5%. I'm just on 5% output. And now, as a filmmaker, you could film this and you'd be able to see the actor's face and it wouldn't feel like there was actually an additional light on them. It would feel like the room is being lit simply with this accent light back here, this what you would call practical light in filmmaking terms. And that is a very, very cool thing. In fact, let me turn this down all the way to 1%. Oh, check it out. I mean, this is really, really cool. See, one of my favorite features of this light is that it goes from 100% power output uh, all the way down to only 1%. The SL60W stops at 10%. You can't go any lower than 10% total output, but this light goes down to 1%. And as a filmmaker, you would really enjoy that. This is not something that I need as a content creator filming talking head videos for my YouTube channel, but as an indie filmmaker, this could be super, super beneficial. The next thing we need to consider is the fan noise itself because there's a fan built in and it's really, really powerful, but 
You also have the ability to turn the fan off if you want to. When it's on, it's automatic. It clicks in when it needs to, to cool down the unit. When it's off, it will never click in. And that in and of itself is basically all I need to know, right? Because if I'm gonna film 10 minutes, 15 minutes of a talking head, even if I've got this thing blasting at full power, if I leave the fan off for 10, 15 minutes, it's gonna be fine. Still, let's actually listen to the fan. And finally, the build quality. The build quality in this thing is fantastic. It's heavy. It's metal. We will make everything metal. Blacker than the blackest black times infinity. And all of the components feel solid. The knobs turn really, really nicely. The, the power on off switch feels really satisfying when you click it. There's nothing about this that doesn't scream professional. Now, is it as good as the $3,000 lights? I have no idea. I've never used those lights. I have no idea. But I would feel totally confident with a decent padded case taking this around to film at different locations, to going on to set. If I was an indie filmmaker, if I'm doing documentaries, I'd feel totally comfortable bringing this. All right, so what's my overall review? What are my impressions of this light? It's really good. I love the soft boxes that Godox makes available. It's of course, they're not specific to this light. You can use them with the SL60W and others, any that have the, the standard, uh, the Bowens mount. I love the parabolic. I think it does a fantastic job of isolating the subject and wrapping around the face a little bit. You get the moody look. Uh, you know, what? of course, you don't have to have a moody look. If I open the the curtain right behind me sudden well now you see the reflection this would be a bad spot to set up the light but you know suddenly this is a very different look because i've got some additional uh light the only reason i kept these closed today is because i wanted to review just the light itself but look now i've got that light coming in from behind me and we've got a much brighter open look uh, but having said that the lantern softbox is great if you just want to leave this powerful light on the in the corner of your room and just let it light up the whole room with a really, really nice, soft wash, and then you never have to worry about setting up a light specifically. I don't have a reviewing system for lights. I'm an audio guy. I give this thing four thumbs up. I don't know why I said four. I couldn't even do more than one. I'm holding a... I give this thing my, my full recommendation with one caveat. If you've never owned a light like this before, it is way, way, way too heavy to put on one of those cheap you know, plastic light stands you get for 20 bucks from newer or whatever. You will need a proper C stand. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to the one that I picked up to use with this light in the description. The first thing that happened to me is I got this out of the box from, from Godox. I put it on my cheap 20, you know, $20 plastic newer lighting stand. And it did, it wobbled a little bit. It did okay until I tried to put a soft box on and then it looked like the thing was, the, the, the light was just, Gonna, that stand was just gonna snap in half. Keep that in mind if you've never owned this light. It's not just the cost of the light, you also need a softbox and you need a good C stand. Ah! So take that into account. I think that's everything I got for, for today. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I will see you soon.